Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate of St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. As we continue our series on honoring the saints, today's Do You Know question is, do you know why Pope Francis canonized Pope Paul VI on October the 14th of 2018? In a previous video, we spoke about the canonization process, a rigorous process which leads ultimately to the church proclaiming that uh, some people uh, are models for Christian living and that those people are enjoying heavenly joys with, with God in heaven at this very moment. Um, so on October the 14th of 2018, Pope Francis canonized Pope Paul VI, who was Pope from 1963 to 1978. Who, he succeeded the papacy of Pope John XXIII, who had called the Vatican Council, uh, Second Vatican Council, in January of 1959, uh, with its first session being held in October of 1962. But unfortunately, Pope, Fred, uh, Pope John XXIII died in June of 1963, and um, the cardinals who came to the conclave were convinced of the great work that the council was already doing and wanted the council to continue. So they were committed to electing a person who would commit himself to uh, continuing the, the, the advances made at the Second Vatican Council. And so the lot fell on the Archbishop of Milan, Giovanni Cardinal Montini, who took the name of Pope Paul VI. Uh, and Pope Paul continued the, the uh, council for at least three more sessions, ending on December the 8th, 1965. And once the council ended, he took on the very rigorous task of implementing the, the, council, the council's vision of church and the council's directives with regards to many of the changes that were uh, in place at the council. Um, he, his, even though he was a cautious reformer, he did uh, implement uh, many of the directives of the Second Vatican Council that were real concrete uh, uh, manifestations of those directives, especially in various areas, most likely, most especially in liturgy, in implementing the vernacular, in reforming the missal, in also uh, establishing uh, the, many of these principles in a very real and concrete manner. Um, he promoted also the, uh, the, world, the, uh, the Council of Bishops, the National Council of Bishops, and delegated authority to them. He also created what came to be known as the Synod of Bishops, which was a consultative body that would meet regularly to consult, to the, to consult with the Pope uh, on various major issues facing the, the Church. But one of his key and most important areas were in the realm of social justice, peace and justice. Um, his most singular accomplishment might have been the reforms of the Second Vatican Council, but his concern with peace and justice in a world of war and violence really uh, were a great, a great effort on his part. Uh, he, in 1963, for example, he established the Vatican Pontifical Council for Peace and Justice, which uh, was kind of activated the Catholic social teachings throughout the world. In 1968, uh, he established January the 1st as the World Day of Peace, um, in which um, the Pope would speak directly on advocating peace and justice in the world. Many of the popes have continued that to this very day. Um, he was uh, very active uh, in also including among the cardinals uh, many of the voices from the developing world as he became more concerned with the poverty of the developing world. Uh, he even sold uh, um, he even sold his tiara and gave money to the poor and even toned down a lot of the pomp and circumstances at the Vatican. Um, one of the great mottos that's associated with um, Pope Paul VI, Peace and Justice, which you see sometimes on bumper stickers, is if you want peace, work for justice. And so he was the, the really first pope who pushed that agenda to the nth degree during his lifetime, especially, as I said, in a war caught up in, in a war, uh, world caught up in war and violence. He was the first pope also to travel internationally 
And as a result of that, on October the, the, the 4th in 1965, he was also the first pope to address the General Assembly of, of the United Nations in which he spoke powerfully about putting an end to war and violence and promoting peace. War never again is a famous line that came out of that speech that he gave. He was also a big player in the ecumenical movement. In January 1964, he traveled to the Holy Land where he met with the Patriarch of Constantinople and together they embraced and lifted the, uh, the ban of excommunication that had been in place between the Catholics and the Orthodox Church since the year 1054. He also visited Latin America and the Philippines and really worked on uh, the concern for the poor in those areas. He also survived an assassination attempt and he wrote important encyclicals on um, peace and justice, uh, the developing nations, and all the social justice teachings. Um, he appointed bishops, by the way. One of his key roles was appointing bishops who were really pastoral bishops bishops who were in touch with the people. Um, and as a result of this, uh, we have a, a tendency uh, today to, to look at, especially Pope Francis, to look at appointing people, uh, bishops who are pastoral and in touch with the people. Probably the darkest hour and the most controversial hours of Pope Paul VI was his uh, July 1968 uh, proclamation of an encyclical called Humane Vitae, which uh, did a complete ban on any form of birth control uh, in any way, shape, or form, which is still a controversial uh, topic to this very day. However, he was a cautious reformer, so many of his priorities were in line with many of the teachings and the directives and the vision of church of the Second Vatican Council, and Pope Francis saw this in uh, Pope Paul VI, very much attuned with his own uh, uh, enlightenment and attunement to the Second Vatican Council, and thought that he was an ideal candidate for uh, Christian discipleship and canonized him. So I hope this has helped to explain why Pope Francis actually canonized Pope Paul VI. And I hope you'll return again to more Do You Know series question as we can explore the life of Oscar Romero, who also was canonized on October the 14th, 2018 with Pope Paul VI. Thank you very much.